Optics 3 is about lenses. This is quite a big video, a very important one, and it's about lenses. You remember on the last diagram in the last video, I showed you what happens when light goes through a prism. Now, if you arrange some glass blocks, uh, the diagram on the left, you can see that we can actually make these rays of light converge. To converge means to come together. So what we do is we get a piece of glass and we shape it like a lentil. In other words, it is lenticular and we call it a lens. And if it's shaped correctly, uh, this is a convex lens or a converging lens and rays of light, parallel rays of light will converge at a point that we call the focus uh, or the focal point. And the distance between the lens and the focal point is the focal length of the lens. Uh, on OCR, we only ever do uh, convex lenses. We don't do con concave lenses as you did at GCSE. We only need to worry about um, convex lenses. Look at these three lenses. The one on the left is a, a little fat one. The one on the right is a thin one and they have different focal lengths. Uh, the one on the left is more powerful. It bends the light more. The one on the right is less powerful. It doesn't bend the light as much. And as a result of that, it's got a big focal length. Uh, an equation you need to know is the power of a lens and P, the power of a lens equals one over the focal length. Power is measured in diopters, capital D. Focal length is measured in meters. And remember, a very common mistake, if you get this question, a lens with a focal length of 20 centimeters has a power of, so P equals one over 0 0.2, and so the power is five diopters. If you're working out the power, don't forget to change it to meters. Here are some rays of light from a point source. Notice that the rays of light from a point source go out in all directions. As we move further away from the source, notice that the rays of light become more and more parallel. And if we were very far away from the source, then the rays of light would be virtually parallel. Rays of light from a distant source are parallel. A distant source is one that's very far away. Uh, what act exactly do I mean by very far away? Well, it depends as we shall see later. Okay, um, now certainly the moon is very far away and the rays of light that you see from any point on the moon, uh, like any particular point that pick a point on the moon and the rays of light from that point arriving at you are parallel. Okay, look at these lenses here. The diagram on the left, we have rays of light from a distant source. How do I know that they are from a distant source? Because they are parallel. Okay, uh, the diagram on the right, we have rays of light from a, a nearby source. And I know that the source isn't distance, distant because these rays are still diverging. Now, on the left diagram, the image is formed at the focal length. So if you look at uh, a, a distant object and that light goes through a lens, then the image is at the focal length, at the focal point of the lens. Uh, if it's from a nearby source, a source that isn't distant, then the image is beyond the focal length. It's a little bit further on. A very important experiment. What's the relationship between the image distance and the object distance? The image distance, we call that little u, uh, sorry, the object distance is little u, the image distance is little v, as on this diagram. Here my object is a candle, and you see I have a screen to the right of the lens, and we're getting an image on the screen, we're getting a real image. Again, at, at A level, we don't do virtual images, we just do real images. We actually do a, a, a lot less at A level than you probably had to at GCSE. So this is a real inverted image. And there's U and there's V, object and image. Okay, 
And in the experiment, what we do is we change the object distance and we see where the whereabouts. We move the screen until you get a focused image. Uh, interesting to note that what's going on on the first of these four diagrams is what happens in a projector. We get a big image. Uh, and then at the bottom there, that's what happens in a camera. You get a, a small image on the film or the CCD. If you plot U against V, this is the graph that you get. Um, it's a kind of one over an inverse graph, but not quite. And you can see where the values of F are off this graph. The lens equation, a very important equation, one over V equals one over U plus one over F. One thing you must remember is that U is negative. Now, why is U negative? I'm going to sneak back to this. Now, if you imagine it was a graph and the horizontal distance was X, then everything right of the origin would be positive and everything left of the origin would be negative, like a Cartesian coordinates. So anything left, any distance left of the lens, which is the origin, is negative, And that's why U is negative. OK, so remember that U is negative. I'll talk you through this example and do a couple to do. An image is formed on the screen of an object 47 centimetres away by a lens of focal length 15 centimetres. Calculate the image distance. So what do we know? We know the focal length of the lens, F, and we know the object distance is minus 47 centimetres. We know the object distance and we're asked to find the image distance, V. It's probably easier if we just leave everything in centimetres, uh, if you could do it all in metres, but what's the point? Just do it in centimetres. So U is minus 47, F is 15, so 1 over V equals minus 1 over 47 plus 1 over 15. Um, when I work this out on my calculator, I use the X to the minus 1 button quite a lot. And what I would do is 1 over 15 minus 1 over 47. And then don't forget to do 1 over your answer. And you should get V is 22 centimetres. Here are some for you to do. Um, pause the video, have a go at them, and I'll tell you the answers in about five seconds. Okay, so the first one, 9.1 centimetres. This is a camera. The second one is a projector, and U is minus 10.3 centimetres. The last one, the lens in a mobile phone's camera has a focal length of about five millimetres. Explain why the distance between the lens and CCD can stay the same, can stay at five millimetres to take photos of nearly all objects. Well, basically, the, the focal length is so small that every object is a distant object. Unless you actually get very, very close to the object with your camera, every object is a distant object uh, compared to the focal length of the lens. Therefore, V will always be equal to F. If you like, 1 over V is 1 over U plus 1 over F. Well, if, if U is infinity, then 1 over U is 0. This is a, a better way to find the focal length of a convex lens, is if we plot 1 over u against 1 over v, we get a straight line, and there are two intercepts on the y and the x-axis, and they are both equal to 1 over f. So get them both and take an average to get f. So if you do this experiment, you plot this graph, uh, use monochromatic light, uh, as we discussed before, so use a filter. Uh, and we usually do error bars to express the uncertainty in V. V is the uh, image distance, and you can never be sure when it's in focus. So you have a maximum and a minimum value, and then you use error bars on your graph before you do your line of best fit. One more equation to do with lenses is for magnification. Magnification M is the size of the image divided by the size of the object. It's how much bigger the image is. 
Um, if m is greater than 1, then the image is bigger. If m is less than 1, then it's smaller. And m equals v over u. Uh, and you should be able to see that from the, the similar triangles on the diagram above. M equals